Ultimately, the consumer is vital to the circular economy. They're the ones driving the consumption of trillions of individual items around the planet, iPhones, food, clothing, and that consumption is only going to grow as a burgeoning middle class in the developing world comes on stream as well. We have to find a different way of servicing those needs. A planet that needs to provide 50% more energy, 50% more food, 30% more water over the next couple of decades, it simply is not going to happen unless we change the way that we consume. There will be a lot of solutions that lie behind the scenes, business to business, in supply chains the consumer never sees. But ultimately, we have to get consumers to think differently about products and services. And consumers will only join us in this journey if they can see the benefits to them personally. If all we talk about is abstract benefits to the planet, less waste, less climate change, less deforestation, of course that matters to them. They care. But we also need to overlay it with the fact that you personally will benefit. This will be faster, it will be cheaper, it will be more aspirational. And if you can link those two worlds of better for planet and people with better for you, the individual consumer, you will win and people will adopt circular economy principles with scale and authority. So we listen to our customers all the time, not just in terms of product, in terms of price, the look of our stores, but also in terms of sustainability. And what's happening is that 10% of them are selling us they're passionately green. They will pay extra for a fair trade or organic product, but it's 10%. 20% of them are telling us they're not interested at all. Usually the poorest sections of a society, they've got other preoccupations, focusing on getting through the week for their family. And then there's two interesting groups in the middle, 35% each. 35% light green. They are very concerned about the future. They want to participate in change, but they want it to be easy. They want it to cost more. They don't want to have to sacrifice their lifestyle of today. If we can put it on a plate for them and help them to get, get involved, they will. And then there's a second group of 35%, a little bit more disheartened. What difference can I make, little or me, on my own? And what that group's looking for is leadership. If all I have to do is one small thing this week, but billions of other people all do that one small thing, that's a big difference. I believe customers are absolutely the heart of the circular economy, but I make the qualification they've got to see the personal benefit as well as the wider environmental one as well. Customers are very demanding. They expect everything off a business. They want great prices, they want great looking stores and websites, they want really aspirational products that make a difference to their lives. And they increasingly want it done in an ethical, transparent way. But they're not willing to pay more for any of those things. What the customer needs to see is personal benefit to them. They've got to walk into a shop, into a store online and see that they buy a product and service that they want. It's sexy, it's aspirational, it's the right price point. And by the way, it's also circular. So for me, Tesla's a great example of what success looks like. An aspirational product that everybody would want to own and to drive, but all in a way that is fundamentally better for the environment as well. Put those two worlds together, better for the consumer, better for the planet, and you've got success. The customer of today has got infinite choice. They can go out there on the street on, online and buy any product, anywhere, at any price. So one of the most important things that business needs to think through in the 21st century is how do you build lifetime customer loyalty? In the past, it was just built upon ease and convenience. Your shop just happened to be closer to their home than anybody else's. Today, that's irrelevant. People can reach past it with the internet. They can find anything anywhere. So one of the most important parts of circular business models for business is to think through how do you build that lifetime loyalty? How do you get people to keep bringing back, buying a new product and service from you in returning the old one? So there's some really exciting opportunities for business leaders who can use this new, brave circular economy to also solve a big business solution today, customer loyalty. There are many challenges about running a circular clothing model in the future. You have to think about all that clothing you might come back, get back. Now, some of it you can reuse to make clothing, but I don't think there'll ever be a situation where Marks & Spencer can literally sell 120,000 tonnes of fibre in 350 million garments and get 120,000 tonnes back to reuse in every single piece of clothing it sells in the future. It will never be that neat. We need to create partnerships with others, whether it's Oxfam working to resell our clothing, other technology companies who can turn our clothing that we're recovering into something totally new. So you can imagine Mark and Spencer wool suits coming back. We'll make new wool suits out of them. But some of it might go to the airline industry to make carpets. Some of it might go to farmers to create composting materials. Some might go to the building industry to create loft insulation. So you have to work to build these horizontal uh, partnerships beyond your own business model. So the role of a business like Marks & Spencer in the circular economy is very important. We're an aggregator ourselves. We've got a supply chain of thousands of different manufacturers, tens of thousands of farmers and raw material pr producers, most of whom don't know each other, yet we know them all. So we have got to look down with a helicopter view across the totality of our value chain and say, 
you've got a waste over there that somebody else over here could use. You didn't know that, let me put you together and you can sort of innovate and bring a product to marketplace. So we have got to be that leader at aggregating our value chain. But then we've also got to be a leader at reaching beyond our immediate sector, retail and supply chains that we know so well, food and clothing, to reach out into other sectors as well. And that does require a different business discipline. Rather than being very inward looking, focusing on just your business model, you've also got to be out there scanning opportunities, meeting people from different sectors who traditionally might have been seen not relevant to me, but now there's a world of opportunity from those businesses that can make those connections with the wider economy all around them. For any business executive, I've got three pieces of key learning. The first is customer. Absolutely put them at the heart of your thinking about the circular economy. There are many solutions that lie behind the scenes, business to business. But ultimately, we have to think about the products and services we sell to billions of consumers. Trillions of items today that we have to change. The customer has to see the benefit of the circular economy to them personally, as much as the wider planet and society. My second piece of learning is all about culture. You've got to get your business to look outwards as much as inwards. The solutions to the circular economy do not lie within your own organisation by and large. It's about collaborating with NGOs, with other businesses from other sectors, with civil society to find solutions. So you must create that culture of outward lookingness. And the third piece of learning is all about scale. You will not solve this alone. You cannot expect to create a little green oasis in a desert called a failed economy of society. You have to work with others. Our work at Marks and Spencer with the Consumer Goods Forum, with the World Economic Forum has been vital. We have learned from working with so many other organisations. We've had the scale of voice to drive the change that we need. From Walmart to Nestle to Unilever to Coca-Cola to Tesco's, all these organisations are putting their shoulders to the wheel as well. And together we're stronger for it.